about 17 combat vets out here. You boys are killing it. Woo! See, it's about the experience for us. It's not about winning. It's Right behind me. We didn't use the auxiliary tank. Uh, sitting at race mile 340 right now. John and Earl getting in the car next. We're going to take it from 9 to 12. We're up Schitt's Creek in Bristol. Oh, You have to dance that fine line between control and chaos. Right now, we just pulled up. Uh, Fuel the last bit of fuel we have and uh, unload the bike. Getting a GoPro mount on the helmet for the start tomorrow. Uh, just prepping the bike, topping it off with coolant. Getting the uh, uh, oil filters clean, ready to go. And uh, just getting ready, man. That's what we're doing, just prepping. Wake up early tomorrow and get this show on the road. Right on. Every time they come in, I would push these down. See these right here? These let the air out of the forks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so because I, pit? I, I, I would, from there in the pit, I'll go and do it. But if you, I'm not doing it, somebody should push on these things. Okay. And you'll hear a little bit of air if, you, if it's quiet enough, you'll hear it come out. Because the forks doing their thing actually start Building getting air in there and yeah. cavitating all that crap. So it's, like, it's good to let it out. Okay. I've even done it when I'm on the bike for like over 100 miles. And now, say you kill the bike, right? And you can't get it started, always start it with the light off because it's just having light on when you're trying to start it, it's just taking, ju taking more juice, juice out of the, of the battery, right? Gotcha. So just remember that. All right, if I killed it or it dies on me, turn this off first and then start it. Kick start or, or push button. Okay. All right, so sometimes maybe it won't fucking start with that for some fucking reason, or maybe it just doesn't do nothing. Mm -hmm. Try kick starting it. Okay. And it's just like a regular kick start bike. Four strokes don't need a lot of gas. If you do, it's like barely. And once it starts running, don't be quick to like try to like give it gas because it'll probably die. Okay. So like, let it run. It may even start. It starts hitting. Uh, 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 don't. Sometimes your initial inclination is like, Just oh, like give it some it. gas. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to It'll start rev it up a little bit. Then you can like okay. give it some gas. Yeah, yep. Yeah. This guy right here. Pull, pull, pull that in. Okay. Why are you doing it? Okay. Sometimes I like do this a couple times. doing just going to check out where the start is or something he's not even on the road right there is he he said fuck it we'll do light and suspension testing my fuel for this morning before I uh, head to the start line. Getting the bike ready, looking over it, filled it with coolant. And uh, yeah, getting ready to rip, man. Couldn't even get any sleep last night because that's how excited I am. expectations of what the charity expects what I expect really is to have a great time it's, it's about the experience for us it's not about winning it's not about third place second place it's about finishing the race and having a great time you know overall even if you don't finish if everyone walks away say you know what that was a great time I've never done something like that 
You know, whether or not we finish or not or how well we do, that's not what we're about. You know, we're about the brotherhood, the camaraderie. We're about coming out here as, as a pit crew. You know, it's, it's a team effort, you know. It's not just the rider on that bike. It's the pit crew, all, all our volunteers, our vets that are out here helping. <laughs> so it's just so much that goes into this uh, time, money, and you know just getting there all across the country to come over here and do this gnarly race you know you know over 500 miles to the nevada desert it's a blessing for us to be able to help others and uh give back and just come together as a team you know like i said that brotherhood that camaraderie i keep talking about that's really what we're doing here you know we camped at the start line last night you know kind of military style bring the bring the bring the cots some sleeping bags some guys didn't even have sleeping bags it was great weather actually out here so it's a beautiful night under the stars and uh, what more could you ask for so for us it's about having a great time but it's about the experience it's really not about how we finish I'm a civilian volunteer. Uh, I'm, I basically help pit crew, bike team, car team, get on the radio, call out to the drivers, co-drivers, see if everything's all good and relay that to the team. Anything they need, I'm right there. A lot of my family has served, uh, so this is my way of giving back. I'm Ben, retired Navy chief. Some experience with rock crawling before in the past. Uh, but for desert racing and going fast, this is gonna be my first time. Well, I'm excited for the responsibility. You can definitely see how it's a team effort driving the race, and I'm excited to be a part of that. For some of the responsibilities is keeping an eye out for uh, hazards along the roads, the tracks that we're racing on, uh, communicating with the driver, uh, with utilizing the maps, uh, letting him know when turns and corners are coming up, um, and assisting with anything else that the driver may need. Growing up as a little kid, watching all the off-road movies, wanting to go race those races, you have to take care of the car. You know, you have to you have to dance that fine line between control and chaos. Going fast and making time and keeping the car intact, you know, because you always you always want to get it to the pit to the next guy. Yeah, my name's Mark. The role here is uh, kind of like team leader for the UTV, so I'll be driving along with John and Anthony. If you get a flat tire and you need to fucking get out and change it, hit this button. This is gonna let oncoming race cars know that there's somebody dealing with a problem in front of them. So it's gonna warn them before they get to you that someone stopped ahead. Okay. Today we're getting ready to get out of here and then uh, start Vegas Arena. It's about 517 miles from where we're at right now in Beatty, Nevada, all the way to Dayton, Nevada, which is outside of Reno, uh, probably a few miles, but about 517 miles. Should start around one o'clock and finish somewhere around midnight to three in the morning. So starting off the race, we're going to have uh, John and Pete in the car. John's going to be driving. Warrior built. Love it. Love racing. Love this time with my fellow brothers. I'll do this as much as I can. Until I get too damn old and decrepit. <laughs> he'll do just fine. I think he'll be, he'll be good. He's going to take it from the start to pit one. And then we got uh, Anthony taking over from there. He's going to go from pit two to pit three. And uh, Anthony's, he's kind of our uh, slow but smooth guy. Not not slow in terms of the race, but he's, you know, cautious. He'll take care of the car. If I can get a VW through this shit, I should be able to drive through this. He'll get it from one point to another and we'll never have to worry about it. And then, uh, and then I'll jump in from pit three and take it to pit five, or sorry, pit two to pit four. Um, and then from there, we'll just start alternating every other pit and just, just rotating the three driver crews and uh, yeah, hopefully we have a pretty seamless, easy, mistake-free race for the next 13 hours. We have all the tools for, the, for it inside the car already. So we just brought a spare tire um, in case they get a flat for whatever reason um, because we're not getting fuel here. We're getting fuel at the next pit. So what are you about to do? I'm about to get fucking naked in my chonies and get in my race suit. Let's go. Bears are in right now. Ah, I spoke with my socks on before I did this.
fucking ready to stand there. When I think about Vegas to Reno, obviously the first thing comes to mind is the longest off-road race in America. You know, uh, you know, over 500 miles through the Nevada desert. It, it's a desolate place. If you ever come out here, there ain't a whole lot out here. You know, it's all types of different terrain. It's a little bit faster, of course. There's some fast roads, but then you get some some silt, some moon dust, or some rocky sections. And you end up all the way up towards Nevada. We kind of got to kind of go up this little mountain. So the last 40 miles can be a little bit tough for some, for a lot of guys. So. Yeah, I'm Casey, Navy veteran. Proud to be out here with the Warrior Built team. I'm out here working on the Can Am Maverick. We're doing pit stops every 50 miles or so. It's a 500 mile race. So we gotta check all kinds of stuff check the control arms, check all the axles, check it, brakes, check everything before you keep going down the track. So that's why I'm here. And then the fire extinguisher, checking the car too at the same time. Uh, having a blast. Hey Mark, what's going on right now, man? Absolutely nothing. We've uh, stood up the air tank and we've stood up the fire extinguisher. We're ready to go at pit six. Um, happier than, you know, pigs and shit, dude. We're having a good time. We're now at pit six, Miller's pit. Uh, car's about 30 miles out. We're going to do a basic check. John and Pete are going to get out. And, and like, Anthony and Ben are going to get in. Oh. Well, how'd it go? Hey, so it went really well. It was awesome. Rock and roll on the rocks, the silt, we hit the open flats, the haul ass. 65, we hit the 91 miles an hour on the, the open lake. This is definitely a different pace, much, much faster. Different, a whole different culture. Love it. How's it going so far? Uh, going well. Uh, we're running third in class right now, um, keeping a steady pace, keeping it about 60% throttle, I'd say. Um, out, we're an hour ahead on schedule, so that's good. Um, car's running great, so keep pushing from here. Get to eight, do another driver change where I think Pete and I are going to get in the car. Um, or I might just have John get back in the car with Pete. Skip me. And he'll go eight to ten. I don't really know yet, man. We haven't really got there, so I'm pretty sure Dad, you know, El Jefe Nick is going to meet up with us. Uh, I would assume probably around pit eight, because um, they're getting ready to finish probably next next two hours. They're they're already pushing thirteen, so they're they're on the, the home stretch up there. The boys are killing it. No issues other than our lack of knowledge on uh, side by sides. You know, I think dumb noises are, are making us a bit paranoid, so we're kind of taking it easy, which is okay. Air on the side of caution, you know what they say. So, I uh, think we're doing good, man. I think we're keeping the car together. Ultimate goal is to finish. Um, you can't win a race until you fucking get across the finish line, dude. So, we're just trying to get there, bro. That's it. We got 25 minutes of daylight left. Yeah, so 340, race ends at 517, so we're actually from this spot less than 200 miles out from the finish line, so um, kind of exciting, yeah, man. Car's doing really good. Uh, last I got notification was 50 miles an hour, 50 miles away. That was about 20 minutes ago, so I'm sure they're a lot closer. Um, boys are keeping the car together pretty good.
Box and roll's good, Jack's good. Behind, yep. No. The good news is, I don't know if it's really good news, but I think it's only like 30 minutes or 40 minutes from here to Dayton. And it's just literally that way, finish line. So the issue the battery, um, we had to change out the burst sprocket and chain. Oh shit. That shit got ate up for some filter It was a old it was an older one we kinda used, so I mean I don't think that was our fault, but filter issues and Yeah man, it was just uh nothing ever like like Luckily, they didn't, they didn't break down anywhere, but when they came in, it was like, hey, we got to fix this where it, it leaves again, or it ain't leaving again, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, no. And even then, I was kind of like, I hope it lasts. <laughs> in my mind, you know, I didn't tell them that shit. I was like, oh, I don't know. It was like, I feel like it was go, go, go. We had very little downtime, any damn pit. It was like, yeah. It was like, we were getting there, and the damn bike was coming in. I won't be announcing it. Desert fans, we got something special for you today. We got the Warrior Built Foundation M952. Hey, tell us about the race. How was it, Evan? This race is real. Those rocks are gnarly, bro. They're gnarly. You guys, have, you guys have any issues out there? Any flat tires? Hey, look, Goose Four tires are the same four tires we started the race with. 
uh, zero, zero flaps, Yokohama tires. Can't beat it, if you ask me. Hey, so y'all heard it right here, Yokohama. If you're looking for the best tire on the planet, it's Yokohama right there. Uh, no flats. Heck, don't even look that they even wore out any tread here. So that must be something special that they hooked you guys up with. So that's, that's good on Yokohama. We see you also got Monster Energy out here helping you guys out. Yeah, I mean, hey, you can't do it without Monster Energy, the World War Foundation. And they didn't take care of the foundation for many, many years. So uh, appreciate everything from Monster, Yokohama, uh, Sparkle, and uh, some of them. So you heard it here from uh, Monster Energy. I've uh, been supporting this charity since uh, 2014, doing great things for these guys. And uh, at least we have a bunch of bets. Are you, are you a vet out there? Raise your hand. Holy, yeah. holy cow. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning. Got a bunch of bets out here. Pulling up. Warriors. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Yeah.